Hi, my name is Matt Ostelay, and I'm a developer relations technical artist at Epic Games. I helped out the Quixel team with materials and performance on their medieval game environment. And today, I want to show you how we leverage runtime virtual texturing for our landscape material and some really cool ways you can use it yourself. In the last video, I showed you how I set up the landscape material for the medieval game environment. So if you haven't watched that, be sure to check it out. And don't forget to download the project from the Unreal Engine Marketplace so you can follow along. We'll include some more links in the description where you can learn about runtime virtual textures and their benefits, including some blog posts from my colleagues at Quixel. To summarize, runtime virtual textures let you draw a bunch of stuff top down into a single really large texture set without the huge memory overhead that that would normally incur. For example, you can project your road material onto your landscape without any additional instructions to draw the landscape itself. For this project, we use two runtime virtual texture assets. RBT Landscape 01, which, if we open up, can see is set to Base Color Specular Roughness Normal, and RBT Landscape Height 01, which is set to World Height. You can find these assets in the Materials Landscape RBT folder. In the world, we have two runtime virtual texture volumes, one for each, and we made sure to set the bounds to the size of the landscape in the level. The landscape actor itself is also set to draw in both RVTs, and Draw in Main Pass is set to Always. This means that the part of the material that outputs to virtual texture will render into the virtual texture associated with its volumes. Then it will separately draw itself into the main pass, or what you can see on screen. Let's take a look back at the material, shall we? To reiterate from the last video, when you're drawing to a runtime virtual texture, you don't have access to anything dynamic. No camera, no time, no vectors, nothing like that. So in our landscape material, we split up calculations into two parts the stuff we could do without dynamic information, and the stuff we couldn't. Firstly, we output our base landscape material to the Runtime Virtual Texture Output node for all the relevant data. All of these are calculations that we can do without any information about the player camera, time, vectors, etc. Since all that information isn't available when we're drawing Runtime Virtual Textures. This includes the slight offsets we do to the landscape height, since the world position of the landscape pixel we'd output to the virtual texture doesn't account for world position offset. Next, we added a switch here to ensure that if the hardware we're running on doesn't support virtual texturing, we can still draw our material. In this case, we just pipe our earlier calculations out to the rest of the material. The other input to this is the Runtime Virtual Texture Sample parameter. For this, we just need to sample the stuff we already drew into the Runtime Virtual Texture. By default, I set this to the RVT landscape, as we mentioned earlier, since we don't need any world height information in this material. That's really all there is to it. Do the heavy and non-dynamic calculations for your material and output them to a Runtime Virtual Texture, then read those values back from the Runtime Virtual Texture to create your final material. That's not all we used Runtime Virtual Texturing for in this project, though. The great thing about them is that we now have color information for any XY coordinate within the volume that we can access as a texture lookup instead of trying to calculate it. We also know the Z position of the landscape from our World Height RVT. Armed with that information, we can set up materials that will blend into the landscape without any additional decals or draw calls, or manually setting up anything. You can see how we did that in M Blend Master. Let's take a look at how you can add this functionality to your own materials, though. I'll start with the M Standard Master material and make a copy of it called M My Blendable Master Material. I'll open that up and in the Materials Details panel, I'll check the Use Material Attributes checkbox. To get started, I'll direct the albedo, specular, roughness, and normal calculations to their corresponding inputs on a set material attributes node. Then I'll set up a runtime virtual texture parameter and target RBT landscape as the default value. Since the runtime virtual texture parameter node uses world position as an input, there's nothing else we need to do to sample the corresponding position in the landscape RBT. I'll drag off the base color, specular roughness, and normal outputs and pipe those into a set material attributes node as well. Next, I'll input both the base material and the landscape information into a blend material attributes node. Lastly, we'll figure out when and how we want to blend with the terrain. My goal here is to smoothly blend between our base material and the landscape material within a certain range of the landscape. As we get closer to the landscape, we should be seeing more of the landscape and less of the base material. 
We can do that really easily since we know the world height position of the landscape from the other runtime virtual texture. I'll make another runtime virtual texture sample parameter and target the RVT height by default. I don't want to use an if node here since that'll create a really harsh cutoff. Instead, I want to create a smooth gradient between the landscape's height and a certain distance away from that. I'll make a scalar parameter and call it blend distance. We'll do a fairly simple normalized range function here. We already know the range, blend distance. I just need to bring the world position z into that range, and I can do that by subtracting world height from world position z. Next, I divide that by blend distance, 1 minus it, and finally saturate the value so it stays between 0 and 1. If I preview this on a material in the world, you can see that the value is 1 at the intersection of the landscape and 0 about 64 units away from the landscape surface. But wait, since the runtime virtual texture is a top-down projection, this effect won't work great on vertical surfaces. It'll look like a UV error or something undesirable like that. We can also use the vertex normal world space dot b value here, since this value is telling us how up the current pixel is pointing. When it's pointing all the way up, it'll be 1. When it's pointing all the way down, it'll be negative 1. I want to make sure that as the surface goes to horizontal, we don't blend at all. There's a million different ways you can solve this blend. For now, it's easy enough for us to saturate the value, since we're not worried about blending any surfaces that are pointing down, and multiply that by the height blend from earlier. Finally, we can plug this value into the blend material attributes alpha input. Now as I move this rock around the landscape, it blends in near the edges, but if I drop in this box, we don't get any unwanted texture smearing. I hope this video has inspired you to start using runtime virtual texturing in your project, and I can't wait to see what you make with it. If you want to learn more about landscape materials in UE4, I highly recommend you check out Ben Cloward's video series on the subject, where he goes into much greater detail about all these concepts and more. Be sure to check out the Medieval Game Environment project on the Unreal Engine Marketplace and see all the cool things you can do with the landscape material and runtime virtual textures. Thanks for watching.